All right. So today we're going to learn the last two triangle congruence theorems, and they are side, 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 and hypotenuse leg. Hypotenuse leg. I think um, side, side, side is perhaps the most obvious. Side, side, side means if you have two triangles where the three sides are all the same length, that those triangles are congruent. So let's go ahead and draw a couple of those triangles so you can see what this theorem looks like in action. So let's do triangle number one. And then next to it, what the heck, let's do triangle number two. Just feels right. As usual, you cannot go based on the picture, although my pictures are pretty great. I think that's something we can all agree on. I nailed it. These two triangles even look the same. It's like they're twins, fraternal twins, but twins. So the side, side, side congruence theorem hereafter known as SSS says if three sides of one triangle are congruent. Two, three sides of another triangle then the two triangles are congruent. Zanes decided to join us for some geometry. It's a little preview. So in this case, the congruent statement that we could write would be that triangle ABC is congruent to the order matters here. So the first two letters that I have are AB, which according to my diagram is the sign with one congruency mark. I mean, one doodly did. On the other triangle, the one that has one doodly did is either DE or ED. How do I know which order to go in? How do I know if it's DE or ED? Well, A, Angle A here is the intersection of the three and the one. Angle A is where the three line side and the one line side intersect. The one line and three line side on the second triangle intersect at D. So that tells me it's DE instead of ED. And of course, the only side left is F, D, E, F. So make sure you get them in the correct order. D, E, F is correct. E, D, F would not be correct. Now, in this case, they're in alphabetical order, but that will not always be the, tr the truth. Sometimes that won't be in alphabetical order just to confuse you and ruin your life. I mean, increase your life's value by giving you
Ah, yes, good. I forgot the triangle symbol. Triangle DEF. Thank you. So let's see this in action. I'm going to draw a couple of congruent triangles here. Perfectly congruent, as all my triangles are. perfectly congruent as everything should be. Nailed it. All right, there we go. So the first one I'm going to call uh, PQR. And the second one I'm going to call um, STU. For stupendous triangle. It does matter. And I'm just going to tell you, these two triangles are congruent. What do you suppose my question is going to be? You're half right. The question is, what's the value of x? Which means I need to know the length of side PQ. So let's start looking at the sides that are congruent here. Um, QR is congruent to TU. Right, those are both 21. And diddly do side is going to be congruent to diddly do side. I don't even really care how big it is, I just care that they're the same, which means that my side I need to know, PQ, is congruent to 13. So when I set that up as an equation, what will the equation be? Go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, sorry, I was caught my reflection there on the screen. Your equation is very good too. Yes. So let's solve this real quick. Thirteen minus four. Dang it! I left my calculator across the room. I'm just gonna have to guess. I think X is three. Who's with me? Everyone. everyone. Oh my gosh. If everyone was jumping off a bridge, would you still say X was three? Why? What does that have to do with the value of X? I said if everyone was... 
I said, if everyone was jumping off a bridge, would you still say X equals three? I mean, you don't have to jump off the bridge, but you do have to say X equals three. Hey, you know what we should do? <laughs> no, it's something even better than jumping off a bridge. Doing a proof. Listen, I know you don't like proofs, but saying you'd rather jump into a volcano seems a little dramatic. Well, we'll miss you. I mean, we'll literally miss you. Now, every time I throw a stapler at your desk, it's not going to hit you because you'll be in a volcano instead. Okay. Well, I didn't really want to do a proof, but since you guys begged for it, I guess we will. Just a few minutes ago, I, I said, okay, well, I guess we're done with geometry for this year. And you were like, no, proofs. So, you know, you got to give the people what they want. So we're going to do a proof, and then you can watch me do 100 one-armed push-ups. Got to give the people what they want. After this proof, I'll flex a little bit for you. You're welcome. I can hear you mumbling over there, and I'm just going to assume that what you said was, can we get out our cell phones and take videos? And the answer is nope. You have to pay for that. Yes, sorry, I just had to make my line a little longer because this proof is going to be a doozy. So this proof is going to involve our new theorem that we just did, which was the side, side, side congruence theorem. But what I want you to notice is that the two triangles you were given have right angles. They both have right angles. And then which pieces of those triangles were we told are congruent? The hypotenuse of each and one of the legs which is our other congruence theorem we're gonna to learn today, hypotenuse leg. And we were told these right triangles have a congruent hypoten hypotenuses, hypotenuse, hypotenuse, hypotenuses, and congruent legs. So let's start off with the uh, given stuff, which is that side JK is congruent to side XY and side JL is congruent to uh, side XZ that was given. What does congruent mean? They're equal to one another, that's gonna be step two.
Uh, we'll get there. What? X, E. There aren't any E's in the problem. Letters are hard. That's why I'm not an English teacher. That is the definition of congruence. It means they're equal to one another. I don't know about you, but when I see a right triangle, I'm thinking Pythagorean theorem. And the reason I'm thinking Pythagorean theorem is because I can use the side, side, side congruence property if I can prove that KL and ZY are congruent. I've got two of the sides. I just need to find the third side and I can prove that the triangles are congruent. So one of the ways I can get the third side, if I don't know it, is with the Pythagorean theorem. So let's make that our next step. We're gonna have the Pythagorean theorem twice, once for each triangle. So we're gonna say JK squared plus KL squared equals JL squared. And then we're also, that's the first triangle. The next triangle, we're gonna say XY squared plus uh, YZ squared equals XZ squared. by the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem works really, really smoothly if we know the two legs and we need the hypotenuse, but in this case, we don't know the legs. So in the Pythagorean theorem that we just wrote, I really wanna find KL and I really wanna find YZ. Those are the two things I want. So I'm gonna solve the Pythagorean theorem for the um, KL and the uh, YZ by subtracting JK squared and XY squared on both sides. So that's gonna look like KL squared equals JL squared minus JK squared and yz squared equals xz squared minus xy squared and subtracting something on both sides is just the subtraction property Hmm, now what? By doing what? I substitute because look up at step number two. JK and XY are the same thing and JL and XZ are the same thing. So step five, I'm gonna take that uh, first equation, KL squared equals I'm gonna replace the JL with XZ. And I'm gonna replace the JK with XY squared. And that is, as Peyton said, the substitution property. Hmm, xz squared minus xy squared. Where have I seen that before? Yeah, look at step four, yz squared is equal to, let me underline this, it's a little easier to see. Right here, xz squared minus xy squared, and here's xz squared minus xy squared. So I can do substitution again. 
to do KL squared equals YZ squared by substitution. Now what? Not yet. Squared equals squared is close. I got to get rid of the squared, right? No, I'm just going to do square root both sides. Square root property. And now Ellie says that means they're congruent because the definition of congruence says if two sides are equal, then they must be congruent. So side KL is congruent to side YZ by the definition of congruence. And as Ellie said, that means I know all three sides are congruent. SSS. I'm done with the proof. You can keep going if you want to, I guess. Whew, sweet Mamba Jahamba. That was awesome. The thing I like about this proof is that by doing this proof, we have created a shortcut for ourselves. We just proved that if you have two right triangles, and they have congruent hypotenuses and congruent legs, those triangles are congruent. So this nine step proof, I never have to do this again because by doing this, I found a shortcut and the shortcut is called the hypotenuse leg theorem. In general, I like proofs because you aren't allowed to say something unless you can back it up with evidence. And that is a valuable skill. More so than any other day of the year, I think on election day, that is an important thing to know. You should not be able to say things unless you can prove that they are true. As you are watching the election returns tonight, and I know that you're all going to stay up late to watch it, you're going to you're going to make popcorn and sit in front of the TV, cuddled under some blankets and just watch the election returns come in. You will see a lot of people on TV trying to be the first ones to say who won the election. So a lot of them will make a lot of speculation that is They'll probably have a little bit of proof, but definitely not a lot of proof. Because in some cases, they think it's more important to be first than to be correct. The one source that you can look at that is accurate 100% of the time are the returns released by the Associated Press because the Associated Press will not call a state for one candidate or the other until they are 100% sure. That doesn't mean they have to count all of the votes, but it means if a candidate is ahead by more votes than there are left to count, they will say so-and-so won this state. So the other news stations that are going to be talking about this tonight, which is probably all of them, you got to take what they say with a grain of salt, because sometimes they're right, and sometimes they're like, well, we're probably right, and if we are, we get to tell everybody we were first. It does. It's bragging rights. TNN, the Taylor News Network, was the first one to call the presidency. You should watch us from now on because we had the most accurate and most quick results. TNN, the Taylor News Network. Taylor. Yep. 
Okay, I didn't really think I was going to have to explain this, but Taylor News Network's not a real thing. I just made it up. Follow me on YouTube Live, kids, where I will be calling the election unless it gets late and I get tired. In which case, I'll go to sleep and you can just tell me when we know something. Or don't. I mean, I'm mostly concerned with who's going to be on the municipal district. That's the vote that matters to me the most. Our local municipal district, because that's the one that will affect me most directly. And I'm very selfish. I'm very self-involved. I like the things that affect me directly. The president is whose face I'm going to have to look at when I turn on the TV. But the person doing the municipal district is going to decide my water rates. And that affects me directly. Water bill's been a little low this year. I feel like it's probably going to have to go up next year. So we're going to do one more proof using this new theorem, the HL theorem. It'll be a short one. It won't be a nine step or it'll be like oh, four or five steps. But um, I do want to talk a little bit about SSA, the SSA theorem. We talked about how that is not a real thing. SSA is not a valid way to prove triangle congruence. That means two sides and a non-included angle. Because if I have two sides and a non-included angle, these two sides are the same, but the angle on the end, I can make as big or as small as I want to. So I could have one triangle with a really huge angle that goes up like this, and another triangle with a really small angle that goes up like this, if I only have two sides and one angle, a non-included angle. No, hypotenuse leg. Oh, right, okay, so Ellie says this is the exception. And the reason we don't call this SSA, the reason we call it hypotenuse leg, is because for this to work, it has to be a right triangle. The angle has to be 90 degrees. So SSA only works with a 90 degree angle, which is why we don't call it SSA. We call it hypotenuse leg because the word hypotenuse means you've got a 90 degree angle. Hypotenuse is the side across from the 90 degree angle. So that's why we don't call it SSA, because it only works with right triangles. Speaking of right triangles, let me draw a couple for you. You don't need to stay up late, by the way, and see who's going to get a uh, county commissioner place three because there was one person running unopposed. So it's Mike Sandoval. So if you were like, oh man, I got to stay up late and see who gets county commissioner. Sorry, we already know who it's going to be. It's probably not worth it anyway, because something tells me that the major news networks are not going to be discussing that particular election. Which is why you got to tune in to TNN, the Taylor News Network. <laughs> that's that's literally exactly what Christian just said. Well, maybe you should listen. That's what that's what Christian said only ten seconds ago. <laughs> it's like shouting into the Grand Canyon. You just wait a little bit and you get the echo right back.
So because CD is a perpendicular bisector of AB, that's what allows me to put the right angle symbols, and that's what allows me to say that AM and BM are congruent. I feel like that's going to come up in just a minute. I love two column proofs. It makes me feel so organized. Not that I've ever seen. If I tell you no, then I'm sure Emily will dig one up. But I've never seen one. A proof that doesn't start with given. <laughs> yeah, if you don't care about your proof being right, lots of them can start without given. And they can end with proving something that the problem didn't ask you to do. Okay, so the definition of perpendicular bisector gives us two pieces of information that we've already drawn on the diagram, but we're going to go ahead and write out here. One of the pieces of information we get from perpendicular bisector is that angle CMB and AMD are right angles. And the other piece of information we get is that AM and BM are congruent. Perpendicular bisector gives us both of those pieces of information. So the step two, we're going to talk about the right angles. CMB and AMD are right angles. Nope. How am I supposed to slow down real quick? OK, I'll stop writing for five seconds. I'll stop writing for five minutes. I mean, not right now, but later. So those are the two pieces of information we get from this being a perpendicular bisector. We've got a pair of right angles and we got a pair of congruent sides. Yes. Okay, good talk. We actually know enough now to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Are they both right triangles? Do they both have congruent hypotenuses? Yes. Do they both have a congruent leg? Hypotenuse leg is how we know they're congruent. And as we showed on the last proof that we did, the nine stepper, you could continue going in this proof and prove that they were congruent by side, 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 if you were willing to go through all those Pythagorean theorem hoops we had to jump through. You could prove it by side, side, side. It's more than twice as long, but you can do it. Yeah, you're like, you know what? I am having the worst case of insomnia. I wish there was something I could do to help me go to sleep. I know. Let's do a side, side, side proof with right triangles. A side, side, side proof with just regular triangles wouldn't be bad. But specifically, if it's a right triangle where they give you two sides on each, a side, side, side proof would cure your insomnia right up. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any questions besides, please send me the notes you went too fast? Which I guess is not a question. That part? Anybody else have any questions?
Yes, what a great question. Ellie said, what if instead of being told that CD was the bisector of AB, you were told that AB was the bisector of CD, could you have still done it? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely. We still would have had hypotenuse and leg, just would have been the other leg. What a great question. So any perpendicular bisector would have worked. You are so smart. Your math teacher must be just ridiculously handsome. Anybody else have a question? Uh, that's not a question. Can't you take a nap? Uh, sure. <laughs> 